Rocking with PettyBlog.com. It's your boy Snoop D O Double G, and you are now watching the Petty Blog. I can't be on the Petty Blog. <laughs> oh my God! It just hit me. <laughs> petty and T. I I I I was so dumb. <laughs> so they already know that I'm dropping the T. So let's get right into it. A 30 year old woman named Jacqueline Reed, who was going through a mental health crisis and who was caught in the middle of arguing with a random woman on the streets, which spilled into McDonald's, is gone after a 35 year old McDonald's employee named Sam Ivy and her. And before we get more knee deep into the story, before her family knew exactly what happened to her, they reported her as missing. And here is what their post says so y'all can kind of get a gist into the mindset of this woman. Jacqueline has been diagnosed with a severe psychotic disorder. Due to her condition, we are deeply concerned for her safety. She left her therapy appointment that day during an episode. She had been unwell for a few days leading up to her disappearance. Unfortunately, we were unable to prevent her from driving as per JCPD regulations. We have been informed that a silver alert cannot be issued without a certificate of needs, which requires a physical evaluation. Difficult since we do not know her whereabouts. Please help us share this information far and wide. Our sister's well-being is at stake, and we desperately want to find her and ensure that she receives the help that she needs. Jacqueline is a kind and gentle soul who deserves to be located and cared for. Your support in spreading the word is deeply appreciated. So as y'all can see, her family was really concerned and tried to get the authorities involved to no avail. And due to the mental state that she was in, there were actually over seven calls made to police that weekend to which a caller described her as zombified after she dropped her purse in traffic around nine in the morning on October 6th. Yeah, she kind of looked like she was zombified. And a few hours later, police received another call at 11.30 in the morning from someone else saying that she had been walking around in circles and needed a welfare check. She's disoriented and may need a health and welfare check. By 2 p.m. that same day, they received another call stating that she was sitting on the steps of City Hall and wasn't acting right. There's a girl sitting on the steps of City Hall that's not acting right. Even at 1.30 a.m. October 8, callers were still trying to help read. When I tried to check on her, she told me to go away, said the caller, reporting her concerns to dispatchers. She told me to go away. By Sunday evening, October 8th, dispatch fielded a seventh call about Reed, who had recently stayed at but left a local domestic violence shelter, according to the caller. We've gotten out with her a few times this weekend, and every time she's telling us she doesn't want any help, related dispatcher to the caller, who pressed the dispatcher to send the first responder. I definitely don't mind sending someone over there to check on her again. Yeah, I wish somebody could get her some help. If she doesn't want us to help her, then we can't pick her up and take her anywhere. So as y'all can see, no real help was given, and it's a shame that even the police department and this dispatchers clearly can't recognize a mental health breakdown or what have you, right? She hasn't really hurt herself or done anything. So now let's move on to Sam. He was a past felon who actually had previous assault charges and was not even supposed to be possessing a weapon. So aside from his wild behavior, he's been working in fast food for his whole adult life. As you can see in this picture, he has a Burger King uniform on and he lists himself as a cook at KFC, a former crewman at Hardee's, etc. And at the time of this incident, he was working at McDonald's. He was doing his big one in a fast food restaurant space. Now let's get to how these two individuals cross paths. On October 9, Jackie had gotten into an argument with the woman at the bus stop in front of McDonald's to which the woman was afraid of Jackie so she ran inside of McDonald's for help. I just saw her run after a woman holding a McDonald's cup of coffee and was hitting her. To which the manager reportedly was able to get Jackie to leave his establishment but then she came back inside and that's where things took a turn for the worse. She came back in and that's when they say that Sam interjected himself and this time tried to get her out himself, you know, going hard for his fast food job where he didn't have to. And that's when she touched the Mickey D's employee, not hit, but touched him to which he immediately took out his concealed gun and shot her in the chest and then fled the scene. She did touch him, but it was not what I would consider self-defense. Wow. When this is said that the simple touch did not warrant for this to happen to her at all, but because of how she looked at the time, as some described her as like a zombie, folks were frightened of her mere presence. As you can see, several folks called the cops on her at the sight of her. It looked like she was zombified. There was a lady standing in the middle of the road screaming, trying to get in the car. 
So sadly, Sam did this to her as if she was one from the movies who turns others into what she is by biting them or even in some movies by touching them. Unfortunately, this is the reality of what movies display and they show that the only way to stop them is to do what Sam did and that's not an excuse for Sam at all. I'm just trying to give y'all a fuller understanding of what happened. He should have waited for authorities to get there and should not have been carrying at all and should never have even gotten involved. Okay, now someone in the NC area left this comment on Sam's page after it happened. They wrote, you are a hero. The awful person you stopped just the day before had attempted to attack me as well. You a hero, Big Sam. You don't deserve what's happening to you. You did the right thing. That's crazy, but that comment is from a stranger on a public post, okay? She's assaulting people. Now, Sam fled from McDonald's to his child's school, I guess, you know, trying to pick them up early and then flee just like in the movies. But that's where he was arrested because the resource police officer from the school recognized his name after it was broadcasted on police radio or whatever and figured that school to get his child would be his next step and so he waited in the front and about 10 minutes later he was right because sam showed up and was immediately arrested without any struggle recognized by an sro you can see in this video ivy on the ground in the parking lot being arrested he is being held without bond and charged with second degree murder and possession of a firearm by a felon and the crazy thing is that Jackie is from Tennessee and had only been in town for about five days, according to police. Detectives continue to investigate the circumstances of how she landed in Hendersonville. So it's crazy that they received calls for her for every single one of those days that people spotted her and that nothing was done. Nine interactions over four days. Some odd behavior that caused us to interact with her a lot. All I have to say is mental health is real and probably needs to be more educated in the school system, especially in the police field, because this could have been prevented. People were concerned, worried for, and scared of her, but really it didn't seem like she posed any real threat and wouldn't be looked at as one had the police knew what to do. Her family says that she was a child athlete and therefore led a normal life and was only recently diagnosed so mental health issues can hit anyone at any given time so it needs to be handled differently. Rest in peace Jacqueline Reed.